Our immune system is equipped with cells that form an army that help our body defend itself and fight foreign invaders. Some of these immune cells, called T-cells and B-cells, are programmed to get rid of foreign invaders like viruses and bacteria. T-cells release toxins against the foreign invaders, and B-cells make antibodies to neutralize them. We have known for some time that our immune cells can recognize cancer cells as foreign invaders and attack them by secreting special factors, or weapons, called cytokines. How can our immune cells do this? The organs of our body are composed of billions of cells which contain thousands of proteins that act like worker bees and are responsible for the function of our cells. Within the cells, these proteins break into small parts called peptides. For the immune system to know what is happening inside our cells, these peptides travel to the surface of our cells and are presented to our immune system by exhibiting molecules called MHC or HLA. T-cells perform a function called surveillance. They continuously scan the peptides which are presented on our cells. This scan works as a barcode scanning machine and the peptides presented on the cells are like unique barcodes. That is called an antigen. But if the peptides come from foreign invader proteins like viruses, then the T-cells are activated to attack the invader cell with weapons to eliminate it. The T cell secretes certain proteins and chemicals called cytokines and factors. Cytokines signal the immune system to start attacking the cells that contain invading organisms. Proteins are your body's basic building blocks. They allow your cells to divide, rest, and function properly. But sometimes these proteins get changed or mutated. For example, smoking leads to mutations in our lung cells that make abnormal proteins in those cells. Sometimes when these proteins are changed, they stop functioning normally. This makes the cell become cancerous by making it grow and divide to become cancer. These mutated proteins are also broken down into smaller pieces and are presented as peptides on the surface of the cancer cell. These abnormal peptides are recognized by the T-cell receptor as foreign and the T-cells are activated to kill the cancer cells. But if the immune system can recognize and eliminate cancer, then why do people develop cancer? Sometimes the immune system fails to do its job. The immune response against cancer may not be strong enough, or cancer cells may evade the immune system. Tumors, which are a group of cancer cells, can build a defense network against our immune system. The defense network can either prevent the immune cell army from entering the tumor, or can weaken and inhibit the T cells. For example, Tumors can express attack molecules on their surface that bind to the T cells and inhibit their killing activity. These molecules are called checkpoints, and examples are PD1, PDL1, and CTLA4. The tumor can also secrete proteins, factors, and cytokines that inhibit T cells from attacking and killing cancer cells, and can also turn T cells into friends of the tumor. Examples are IL10, TGF beta, and IDO. These cells can then deactivate other T cells. These traitor T cells are called T regulatory cells and are the enemy of the killer T cell army. The field of immunotherapy has shown great progress towards a cure for cancer with many recent breakthroughs after working for many years. Immunotherapy is one of the most important revolutions in the history of medicine. What are the different types of immunotherapy? Immunotherapy functions in two primary ways. The first way is by boosting the immune system in order to make it stronger. And the second is by using drugs that enable the immune system to fight the tumor. First, we will discuss the immune boosting methods. One immunotherapy boosting method is a vaccine's approach. A cancer vaccine is developed to activate the patient's own T cells against the foreign antigens like the flu vaccine against the flu viruses. The foreign antigens can be identified by identifying mutated proteins in the tumor. These mutated proteins, called neoantigens, can be given as a cancer vaccine. When T cells are trained by the neoantigen vaccine, they go around the body to find those specific mutated antigens and will locate them on the tumors. Another immune-boosting approach is adoptive T-cell transfer, 
where T cells are taken out of the patient's body, grown in the laboratory, and educated to recognize cancer or even modified to become much stronger. These fighter cells are then transferred back into the patient. A third immune-boosting approach is to use stimulating proteins called cytokines. These cytokines are stimulating proteins that cause the T cells to significantly multiply and get stronger, such as interleukin 2, 7, 12, and 15. A fourth immune-boosting approach uses antibodies that stimulate T cells and cause the T cells to grow and strengthen by binding to stimulating molecules on the cell surface of T cells. These antibodies are called agonist antibodies. Anti-OX40, anti-Gitter, and anti-41BB are examples of such agonist antibodies. This allows the enhanced T cell to overwhelm the cancer cells. The second way immunotherapy functions is by using drugs that enable the immune system to fight the tumors. Strategies have been developed that knock down cancer defense mechanisms. There are antibodies that neutralize the inhibitory factors and cytokines, such as anti-IL-10 and anti-TGF-beta and IDO inhibitors. Some of these immunotherapy approaches have already been approved by the FDA, like anti-PD-1, PDL1 and anti-CTLA4. Drug development has progressed rapidly and more and more patients are experiencing remarkable responses to immunotherapy that allows them to lead longer, healthier lives. For example, patients in this clinical trial have melanoma, a kind of skin cancer. The growth lines show that targeting both CTLA4 and PD1, PDL1 encourages T cells to fight cancer. With this combination approach, 70% of patients with advanced melanoma continue to survive more than three years. These therapies also have some side effects that need to be monitored very closely by the treating physician. Although the side effects are not very common, they could be life-threatening if not treated. These side effects are treatable, especially if discovered early, which include diarrhea because of inflammation in the intestine, some endocrine diseases that lead to weakness, thyroid dysfunction or diabetes, and other side effects that need to be discussed with the treating team. The future of immunotherapy is in combining different approaches to accomplish two goals, to create a trained army of cells to attack the cancer, and to break down the defenses of these cancers by unleashing your own immune defense against cancer to improve on the currently very impressive results that immunotherapy is already providing our patients.